Good morning. Welcome, Good morning. everyone. We are so excited. We are back in 2021, the exchange. And Sarah and I, we were just laughing before we began this because <laughs> She said we're in the same prayer closet because we keep wearing the same thing all the time. It was not <laughs> like literally <laughs> never planned. We just show up and oh, we look kind of corny right now. Like <laughs> I'm wearing tomorrow. Let's wear the, let's be twinsies. Well, it just happens naturally because we're just like that together. We're in the spirit That's and it. we are so excited to know, even though we can't see your faces that you're there, you're watching, you're with us. And yeah. that's comforting to know that you're there. Um, we want you to know that we miss you. I, I feel like I say this every meeting, but it, it's sincere, it's from our hearts. We miss you so much, yeah. being physically with you. And we will take this as long as we have to, having these virtual meetings, but we long for the day. I feel like Paul, when he talks about talks to different churches in the New Testament. He says, I long to be with you. That's that's how I feel. And I know Sarah does too. Yeah, I do. I do. We really, really miss you guys. And, you know, we've been talking so much about, you know, what does this year look like for us and what do we do and how do we really do more to serve you all and build more community? And we know it's a strong need, you know, thank God we've had the, the small groups and, We've had these meetings, but we know that more is needed. And so please know our hearts and how much we love you and how much we care for you and how much we want to be with you. And we really want to do all that we can to make this such an exciting year and for us to really get to know each other on a deeper level where you're not just watching us on a screen, but like we really get to interact with one another. And so I'm really excited for some of the things that we have planned and we are really excited to share those things with you. And so I guess I can just kind of take it away and let you guys know what's happening, right? You can, but I'll, I'll say before that, to piggyback on what you just said, um, if you guys have suggestions yeah. uh, of things, we had a meeting last night with some women brainstorming how we can better serve all of you in the midst of a pandemic mm -hmm. um, with the constraints that we have on us. If you have an idea, if God put something on your heart or you just see a need and, and, and you want to tell us, Hey, I think there's a gap here. I think, you know, maybe this is something the women's ministry can do. We are open. We're all ears um, to hear um, where you guys are and what your needs are and how we can best meet you. So be sure to email Sarah at women at Brooklyn tab.org women at brooklyntab.org, email us and, and let us know what's on your heart. But with that, here's some things we have headed your way. Go ahead, Sarah. So some exciting things that we have headed your way. So our next meeting will be taking place February 27th at 11 a.m. And I'm really excited about these meetings because we, we, we decided we want to split this up twofold. So focus on the spiritual, but then also on the practical and meet you guys on a practical level. And so we're actually going to be doing our first practical teaching that we're going to do is on friendship. What does biblical friendship look like? What does it mean to be a friend? What does God have to say about friendship? You know, many of us, we have friends and we've gone through some heartaches in friendship and we've also experienced life-giving friendship. And so what does that look like? and being able to identify that. So we're really excited that we get to do that with you all. Um, we also wanna let you know that we are online. We really wanna enhance our social media experience for you. And so make sure you're following us, whether it's here on Facebook, um, on YouTube, go and subscribe to The Exchange Ministry, or follow us on IG, on Instagram, at the exchange underscore BT. We are when we're going to be sharing scriptures, testimony, stories. We want to hear your stories and share them and show people who are the women that make up this ministry. And so we're really, really excited. So please stay tuned. We have a lot of content that we're planning, but we need you guys to follow so that you know what's happening. And then also just to stay up to date with what's happening in the ministry. If you haven't been receiving any of our emails, then definitely let us know email us or go to the website and go to the women's page. So go to brooklyntabernacle.org, go to the women's page, and you can sign up 
to join our mailing list because we want to make sure we're always letting you know and reaching as many people as possible so that people aren't aren't feeling like, oh, I didn't know that this was happening. And so we really want to make sure you guys are connected, especially with all that's coming up, all the different fun ideas that we've got um, plans. We want to make sure you are in the know. So make sure you sign up for our mailing list, email us or go to the website and sign up. Um, and then we also want to do some other things like paint nights, maybe like a dinner party, um, just really trying to um, create opportunity for us to just come together and get on Zoom, whatever it is, and connect. Mentorship, we want to provide more mentorship. You know, I know there are a lot of ladies who are more seasoned, who have so much wisdom to share. And many of us, like myself, who are always asking questions and who just really want to know what does it look like to walk through different seasons of life. And I know there are many of you who are make, who are willing and available. And if that's you, email us too and let us know. If you have a heart to reach out to some of the younger women and you want to pour the wisdom that God has put into you, make yourselves available. I really want to challenge you all to step forward and show yourselves and make yourselves available to what God wants to do through you this year. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Then also we're going to be starting another round of small groups. So make sure you look out for that. We'll be opening up registration during February and our goal is to start the week of February 21st, but we really are excited. I, these groups have been amazing. I know for you Sue, like they have been incredible. The ladies are always like, can we continue? <laughs> but we got to make room for everyone else. But I mean, God has really been doing some exciting things in those groups and those are still going to be going around, we're still gonna be treading along with those groups. So make sure you sign up. Spots are always limited depending on the number of facilitators. And maybe you might have a burden to be a facilitator. Maybe you have a heart. Reach out to us. I'm telling you, like this is the year, ladies. This is the year to step forward and really operate in your giftings and, and utilize what God has put inside of you. And I think it's very easy for us to, you know, look at something like the pandemic and this virtual reality that we're living in right now and, and look at it as a roadblock. But I wanna challenge us all to rise above that and not let that be a roadblock to exercising the gifts that God has given us. I mean, I look at Jesus. If Jesus can conquer death, we can conquer virtual reality. Okay, I'm, sorry. I'm just gonna go there. It's really extreme, I know. I'm crazy. That's a valid point. <laughs> if he can do that, we can conquer virtual reality and step outside of ourselves. And so I'm, I'm challenging this and I'm challenging myself. This is not just for you. I'm challenging myself. And I, I know that there's so much more that I can be doing and there's so much more that I want to do to really be a blessing to all of you. So if that's you and that's your heart, reach out. We want to hear from you. I'm just saying, we just want to hear from you. We do. Yes, we do. And, and for those of you that haven't done a small group before, Take advantage of that. The more people that need to sign up, we'll create more groups. But my my group that I had this last go around, I loved my ladies and we had such precious times together. And I remember that first meeting, all our faces came up. We looked like the Brady Bunch, like all <laughs> and we were all just like, Who are you? Who are you? And you know, it was those awkward moments. And then by the end, we didn't want to leave each other. It was so we the bonds that were made between women who are continuing on and and staying in contact with one another and um that is priceless right now so, yeah. so take advantage of that yeah so make sure you stay in touch find out all that's going on i'm i mean sue i i'm really excited for this year i really am especially after that meeting last night it yeah. just really was life-giving to me and just, yeah. like, just hearing what the needs are. We really care for you all. And we really want to meet you guys on a practical level, on a spiritual level. We really want to see God do something new in all of us yeah. through this ministry. And so I'm just, I'm really excited. I'm also excited now that one of the new things that we can bring back, you know, with the pandemic, we haven't been able to like go into the church and actually do any worship. And now God has opened the door for us to do that. And so we have Crystal and the worship team who are going to come and bless us and lead us in a time of worship. And we really invite you to just go deep, go in, don't 
you know, don't be held back by the fact that you're watching on a screen, but really enter in into the presence of God as these women lead you and invite him to, to really speak to you in this time. But let's open our hearts and worship and we're gonna welcome Crystal and the team. We are so honored to worship with you this morning. And we're going to join together and we invite you to lift up the name of Jesus, the only name that saves. There is so much power in that name. Oh, 
with every request, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. There is a victory when we call on your name, Lord. You can do the impossible, and there is nothing, nothing that is too hard for him. Nothing. We can always come to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So forgive us for ever focusing on anything else but you for ever putting anything before you Lord we want to build our foundation on you you are the solid rock on which we stand hallelujah
Praise God for some time of worship. We thank Crystal and the group who are worshiping just in spirit and in truth so sincerely. That wasn't just performance, but that was them worshiping and drawing us into worship too. So I pray that was a blessing to you. Um, and now I, I just wanna share with you a word that um, I've had on my heart and I've been a little intimidated to to speak from this passage because I don't want to overcomplicate it, but the truth of it, um, I have to say in the past few months, the word of God is coming alive to me in a whole new way. And uh, I guess that's the beauty of difficult times, huh? These desperate times that we live in, it makes you desperate and your heart becomes more open, your ears become more attuned. All you want is Jesus because you see there's not much else really out there. Even though we've always known that, we're, we're experiencing that in a new way and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, and I wanna tell you why, but um, let's, let's give a little year in review. 2020, um, I don't need to go through the difficulty of 2020. Um, we can list out all of the things 
that we endured and who would have ever known, I don't know about you guys, but this past uh, uh, New Year's Eve, do you remember New Year's Eve 2019? We all had the 2020 glasses on at church. I was looking at uh, that video the uh, other day of the 2019 New Year's Eve service at BT and how we were all like, yay! And we all had our glasses on and we were all celebrating 2020 vision, all of that. And would we have ever imagined that we would come up against all of the things that we endured? Some are obvious, they were big um, and kind of universal. And then other things were more personal. I, I, I just, it was like something was just unleashed last year. And I know you know that. And now we're in 2021. And, and so at New Year's Eve 2020, I think we were all like, Yay! Like we were happy to get out of 2021, but we're just like, we still don't know what quite is ahead. And uh, we were a little maybe more reserved in how we celebrated what was to come. Um, because, you know, Sarah kind of just said it, our new virtual reality. So many people are calling this our just our new reality. Whatever 2020 ushered into our country, our world, our city, our lives, it has become this new reality that no one is particularly fond of. Um, it's, it's not something we're enjoying. We don't say it with excitement. Our new reality, it's our, this, is, this is our new reality. Um, and so I know a lot of people have been um, struggling with depression. We've heard a lot of that. Um, hopelessness, fear. Um, a lot of us are isolated. You might be today home alone in your apartment, in, in your home, and this new reality isn't so great. Um, we're kind of struggling through it, but we don't like it and it doesn't feel good and we want it to end and this is just life right now. I don't know if you feel that way. This is just life right now. I'm alone. I feel hopeless. There's not much good up in the near future that I can see. And this is reality. Well, as I was reading in Colossians, I was reminded, because I, I, I can struggle with that too, this, this reality that we live in now, this new reality, that there's another new reality that we have experienced as Christians. If you're a Christian today, if you are a born again Christian, there is another new reality that God has for his children. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the reality that we find ourselves in right now. And really for those that are maturing in Christ, whether you're mature or not in Christ, this new reality, if you're a Christian, is more real than the reality that we find ourselves in today in this world. It's more real. But we don't always see it that way because of where we are in our walk with Christ, where we are in our faith, and whether it's weak or strong, we don't see this new reality. But as I read this passage, I got so excited that I could be lifted out of the doldrums of this reality that we are finding ourselves in, that you can be lifted out of whatever flat place you feel like you're in right now, whatever depressed place, hopeless place, useless place you feel like you're in right now, and that there is an escape from it. I, I told Sarah I wanna name this, this message The Great Escape. I don't know, I'll probably give it some other titles as we go, but it is an escape. Like if you feel stuck, like I'm stuck, I'm so an antsy, I I'm sick of being in this apartment, I'm sick of feeling isolated, I'm sick of just the, the fear of economic instability in the future and political discord and a divided country and cultural wars and all of these things, I'm so sick of just being in all of this. There is a place that Jesus has called his people to rise up to that is above this reality that we find ourselves in today. And it is a much greater reality that he wants us to live in each and every day that he's calling us to live in. And it's more real than anything you see right now. It is more real. So let's read this passage. It's in Colossians. It's three, 
uh, chapter 3, 1 through 4. And it says this. This is Paul speaking to the Colossian church. Since you have been raised to new life in Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed the whole world to the whole world, you will share all of his glory. Ladies, there is so much packed into this passage. There is so much in here as I've studied it, as I have prayed over it, as I have read what commentators have drawn out of it. Um, there is so much in here to bring hope to us today and to remind us of who we are and what reality we have been called to because it has been bought for us and secured for us by our Savior, Jesus. And so in order to even know what this reality is and where it all begins is remembering, number one, who you are today, who you are. And I want to bring us back to that first verse where it says, since, since you have been raised to new life in Christ. And I want to just remind you of what your life is right now, of who you are, of what the reality is of your life today, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ. And I want to remind you that there was a time where you were dead. You were dead, not physically dead. You were walking here on this earth. There was a time that I was dead, not physically dead, but we were spiritually dead. We were completely removed from God. We were cut off from God. We were cut off from spiritual realities. We had no spiritual understanding, no spiritual inclinations, and we were controlled by the power of sin and Satan. That was the reality of all of our lives. And I want you to think about that because Boy, when you've been a Christian for a while, you just get into this thing of, yeah, I know I was dead in my sin. I was, I, I used to be dead. Now I'm alive. And, and, and we never, sometimes we, we, we don't stop to think about what the implications of that really are. That we were dead. You were dead. You were a corpse. You were a broken branch broken off of the source of life, of hope, of love, of peace, of joy. You were dead in your sins. You were completely removed from God. There was a barrier between you and God. There was no fellowship with him. There was no getting drawing from his life. We were dead. We were enemies with God. And Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 puts it this way. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in this unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. And all of us used to live in that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. That's who we were. Whatever you see in this world, the ugliness, the deadness, the sin, the being controlled by lust, just being children of wrath, the Bible calls, that's what we were. We were that. Whatever we see that's ugly around us, we were once that. We were a part of that. We were controlled by that, by Satan himself. So that was the reality of who we were. But one day, and all of our stories are very different, we put our trust in Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. And the Bible tells us that when we put our faith in him, we died with him. When he went to a cross and he took on the sins of the world, and he went into a grave and he conquered those sins. He paid the price for them. He took on the wrath of God and the punishment that we deserved. He defeated sin. He defeated death and rose from the grave to prove that, that there was victory all over all of those things. They had been defeated. 
And now when we put our faith in Jesus, we died with him. In the spiritual realm, we died with him. The way he died for our sins, the way he took the punishment, which is the, the punishment of sin is death. We took that with him. And because we were united with him in faith, our faith was in him, we rose just with him. The same way Jesus rose from the dead, he resurrected us and we took on new life that comes from Jesus Christ by the power of his Holy Spirit that he's placed within us. We became alive in Christ. We were dead. We were walking in sin, controlled by it, controlled by our desires, self-destructing, disconnected from God and his peace and his love and his joy, just living uh, according to our own selfish desires, controlled by the prince of this earth, Satan. And one day we put our trust in Jesus and a transaction happened that my feeble words can't completely convey, but we died with Christ because we became united with him. And by that we rose and took on new life, the life that Jesus gives. In his resurrection, we took that resurrection power and became alive in it. And now we live today. You're alive. You might be sitting at home in your apartment and you might feel down today and you might feel hopeless today. And the things of this world might just be overwhelming you and crashing over you, just headline after headline, reality after reality of this world. But there is a greater reality that God wants to impress on your heart today and that you have life today. You are alive. You have life today. And this is what the Bible says, Ephesians 4 through 7. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It's only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Does that bring a little excitement to your life right now? That there's something greater than what you see around you, the reality of this world and this life, whatever it is, there is a spiritual reality that's more real than any of those things that has taken place in your life. And today you have a spiritual life. You are alive in Christ. And I wanna explain what that means today. I wanna explain how you begin to walk in that in a new way. We are alive in Christ. Do you understand what that means? You know, so many people, it, it, it's not just atheists and theists, people that don't believe in God and people that do believe in God. And it's not even in just saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I'm a Christian. And then we go back to living life the way uh, we normally live it, hopefully just a little bit better. No, there is the spirit of Christ alive in us today. We're not dead anymore. We're not dead like the world is. We are alive. You know what? I, 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 I met an, a, a neighbor, someone in my neighborhood recently, and it's a long story, but they, uh, they were explaining how, uh, it was a young man, how his mother had been involved in witchcraft and she has always seen evil spirits, physical manifestations of evil spirits and how she's been controlled by that. And he believes that that was given to him. And he explained to my family how his whole life he's been tormented by evil spirits that physically manifest in his room and take on different forms and always act as though they're, they're, they're going to uh, try to kill him. And, you know, my, my husband and I, we sat there and we listened and um, I, I can only explain it as, as I heard this boy just explain what was happening to him, how he's been tormented his whole life, the life that it's robbing of him, just the power of sin and the enemy and how it's just sucking everything out of him. And, and I, I just thought of the life that Jesus wants to give us, the power, the resurrection power in our lives that he wants us to walk in. And a, and a righteous indignation rose up inside of me 
uh, where I, I just became so angry at the devil. I became so angry at sin and what it does to God's creation. And I, and I tried to express to this young man the life that Jesus wants to give him, resurrection life in his, in his spiritual man, that, that none of those things would ever be able to, to torment him again, that they would have no power because he has the life of Jesus Christ inside of him and that the gates of hell, hell shall not prevail over those things, that that's the life that Jesus gives his people, his children, and that he wants us to walk in and he wants that young man to walk in. And if you would pray for that young man um, and remember him, that we, we told him to call on the name of Jesus and we're trusting that he's gonna do that and he's gonna experience spiritual life where he feels dead right now and where he feels like the power of Satan can control him. We want him to know the life that Jesus gives us. And what kind of life is that? What is that? What is it that Jesus has for us today? What does that life look like? Well, you know, this verse in Ephesians, it tells us that we have to think about the things of heaven and not the things of earth. And that for we died to this life and that we need to set our sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in a place of honor at the right hand of God. My sisters, if you have been saved and born again, you are united with Jesus Christ. That's why you have new life today. He didn't just deposit in you and step back. You are united with Jesus Christ today. Do you understand that? You're united with him. It can't be separated. You are united with him. And he is in heaven, the Bible tells us. And he is sitting at the right hand of the Father and I, I want you to think about the implications of that today. He's, he's in heaven. He's over everything, sitting at the right hand of the Father, indicating an authority that he has over everything. He has authority over everything. This pandemic, the, the different issues we're facing in our country, racial tensions, political discord, all of that, Jesus is over everything. He is over it all. But most importantly, he is seated. And I want you to understand with that picture of him being seated. Do you know what it means that he's seated today? The fact that he's seated means he's done. He came to this earth, he died, he took on our sin, he defeated it, he rose again. And now those that put their trust in him are united with him and are given resurrection life and have new life. And he's seated in heaven, which means everything that needs to be done is done. It's done. It's been established. It's been accomplished. It's been purchased. Victory has been won to attain it. It is done. And now you, my sister, are united with him. He's in heaven and you are united with him. And this is why this passage is saying, Set your mind on the realities of heaven with the one who you are united with. You're not united to this world anymore. The things of this world, they, they don't govern who you are. They don't govern your emotions. They don't govern your feelings anymore. What does is the one who you are united with, who has given you the life that you now walk in, that you now live in. You are united with him and he is in heaven sitting at the right hand of the Father, having all authority, and he is seated, meaning everything you need has been done for you. Everything you could possibly need today, it's done, it's done. Everything that needs to be done in your life, everything you need for victory over our present circumstances, over the battles that you struggle with internally, over the habits, over the situations that we're dealing with, everything that you need, the joy that you need today to persist and continue on through this life, the peace that you need, the promises that you need, it's done. It's not being worked out anymore by Christ. It's done. Now it's for us to work those things out by faith, to grab hold of them, to learn to walk in them in victory, to learn to take on this new identity that Christ has secured for us, this new life that he's purchased for us and that he's given us to learn what it means to walk in that new life, in that new life. 
We are not dead anymore. We are alive and it's a spiritual life that supersedes everything that we're experiencing around us on this earth. And God wants us to walk in victory. He wants us to grab hold of everything he secured for us. Everything that he has authority over in heaven, he wants us to have authority over because we are united with him. We are united with him. The Bible says that our lives are hidden in him. They're hidden in him. I love that picture. Don't you love that picture? We're not only united with him, connected with him. It's, it's just this intricate intertwining of his life and ours, but we are hidden in him. And I, I, think of, I think of my daughter, Charlotte. Sometimes she'll come in bed with me and I just, I wrap my arms around her and I, I feel her press into me. And she just kind of just wants me to just surround her with myself. There's some kind of security that she feels. And I love to make her feel secure in that way. It's like everything that I am becomes what she is. Everything I can provide her, my, my protection, my love for her, my encouragement of her. It's like, I just want to wrap it around her and I feel her body rest in that. Like everything my mom is, I'm hidden in that right now. And she knows I love her and she knows I would do anything for her. And she knows I, I'm, I live to protect her and to watch over her and to encourage her and to see her become everything that she needs to become in God. And I'm just a sinful woman and I'm a limited woman. But imagine being hidden in God today. Imagine whatever you're feeling today, the loneliness you feel, the isolation you feel, the discouragement you feel, the defeat you might feel. Jesus wants you to be hidden in him today. That these spiritual realities as everything has been stripped away from us women, that these spiritual realities that have always been there, they've always been real, that we would begin to just push through all of the ugliness of this world and that it wouldn't dictate our lives, but that we would press forward to attain everything that Jesus attained us for. And these are the realities that we are united with him. We are hidden in him today. Oh God, I want that to be made so real in my life today and in your life today that we don't live by what we see. We're not governed by what we see or what we feel. We are women of God's word. We live by what Jesus has done for us and what his word promises us. And this is the promise today that you are united in Christ, that you have new life living inside of you today, that you are hidden in Jesus today. Everything that he is, is you yours. It is yours today. It is yours for the asking. It is yours for the reaching out by faith to grab hold of and experience. You have every promise of God's word. You have his promise of peace. You have his promise of joy. You have his promise that he has a plan for your life that this world can never stop. No matter what's going on, no matter what suffering we endure, the world cannot stop the plan of God in your life. It cannot stop it. As you stay united in him, whatever he desires to do in, in your life will be. He has all authority. He's sitting at the right hand of the father. He is sitting. It's done. It's been completed. He has all authority and you are his today. You are his. Would you rest in him today? Would you invite his presence to come and fill your home today? The room that you're sitting in today, would you invite it? Jesus, we have your life in us today. We are united with you today. You who are sitting at the right hand of the Father who has all authority over everything. Would you show us what it is that you've accomplished for us? Would you show us what it is to walk in this new life that you've given us? A spiritual life, not a worldly life, a spiritual life. And that's what we're headed for. This is all practice. This is learning to walk in the victory of it. This is learning to walk in the power of it. It's bringing heaven to earth. And it's not a perfect world that we're trying to create on this earth. It's a perfect life that God is trying to teach us how to walk in, to how to exercise all that he's won for us, all that he's accomplished for us. And we're headed not to a perfect world, but to a perfect heaven. Do you feel your heart being pulled up? Upward to what he's really calling us to. We're, we're not citizens of this earth, the Bible tells us in Philippians. We are citizens of heaven and we're learning to live as citizens of heaven and we're learning to put our mind on heavenly things. And that's what 
this passage is, is commissioning us to do. And that's what I'm commissioning you and myself to do in 2021. Did you walk with your mind set on heavenly realities last year? Did you struggle forward in doing that? I did. I did. I had times where I felt more victorious and other times where the things of this world seemed to completely overtake me, to rule my life, to dictate who Susan is. And I'm so convicted by that. And I know there's no condemnation in God, but he's calling us in 2021 to something much greater. And it's not to keep our eyes fixed on this world anymore, ladies. If that's what defined 2020 for you, tell me, what did that feel like? What did it produce in your life? What did it create? You know, when I, I think about what I saw, I, I stay away from social media, but there were times I went on it. And what I saw coming out of Christians how fixated they were on the things of this world, identifying and holding allegiances to godless people, godless people on every side, godless people who whatever good things they might stand for, they also stand for things that are an abomination to Christ, that are an abomination to God, that make them children of wrath. And we, as the people of God, are identifying with them, are putting our allegiance in them and turning on one another in the body of Christ, of declaring I'm unfriending you because you have an allegiance to that godless person where I think you should have an allegiance to this godless person. So I cut myself off from you, you who are my brother or my sister in Christ, because you don't carry the allegiance that I do here on this earth in this broken godless place that is ruled by Satan. Imagine how God viewed all of that. Imagine, what did he think of that? Was he in agreement? Was that his plan for his children? Did that glorify God? And we take a verse here and there to defend our positions rather than looking to the whole counsel of God and the person of Jesus Christ and how he would respond on this earth to all of this madness. I'll tell you how he would respond. He said it when he was on earth. He said, "My this, this earth is not my home. This earth is not my home. His home was in heaven. And now that we've been united with him, that is our home. That is our allegiance. He is our allegiance. Not this world. Not the brokenness of this world. We don't have an allegiance to this world. Our allegiance is to Christ and him alone. And anything that stands in opposition against him, we stand in opposition against. And so the Bible tells us, set your sights on the realities of heaven. This is who you are now. This is your life. This new life that you've been given, it's not a life that identifies with this world. It is a life that's connected to heaven. That's where you're going. That's where you'll be one day. That's what you're practicing right now. That's what you're growing into right now. And you are being called to bring that perspective, that vantage point to the world. And so think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life is hidden in Christ. We have died to this world, women. We've died to it. So whatever it's bringing on us, it's difficult. And God has supplied grace from heaven. And God has supplied peace from heaven. And God has supplied encouragement and strength and power. And it's all coming from heaven. It's not coming from this world. And so that it's we that we will bring heaven to this world through our lives. That's what God is calling us to. And that is exciting. That raises us above what we see here. I don't want to be anything like what we see here. I don't want to sound like it. I don't want to talk like it. I don't want to look like it. I want to look like something completely different, not a little different, a couple verses mixed with all the, vitri the vitriol and the, the anger and the lack of peace. 
I don't want to mix some verses in. I want to have a life that reflects heaven, that re reflects my Savior, who is a perfect peace, who is reigning in all authority and has all control over all things. And I want to live like my life is dictated by him and not what people do in this world, not what a president does, not what unsaved people do, or even people who profess Christ. They don't control my life. Jesus does. So when you see that peace is being robbed from you, when anger is overflowing out of you because of what you see around you, then you know your mind has not been set on the things of heaven, the realities of heaven. You think life dictates the world, a broken world dictates your life, but Jesus defeated that. He, he defeated death. He defeated this world having control over us. And he has given us life. He is in control of our lives when we are united with him. How exciting is that today? I don't care what your situation is today. I don't care what your reality is on this earth right now. This is the reality that you're to set your minds on. And this is the reality that I want to live by. Don't you want to live by it? I had a meeting with my staff the other day and I was telling them, and I, I didn't understand even what I was completely saying, but then I read this passage and I was like, that's it. I said, ladies, we don't want to live down here. There's so many choices we can make where we live down here. And in the muck and the mire, the sin, the selfishness, the anger, the lack of peace, the discord, I don't wanna live down there. And when I fill myself, I know when I make certain choices of what I watch on TV, of what uh, social media I take in, even by Christians, by the things that I choose to think about, by the, the conversations that I choose to have, by the way I treat people, the way I view people. I don't wanna live down here. I wanna live up here. I don't wanna be down in it. I don't want my, my social media posts to just sound like everybody else's. It's all the same thing. It all sounds like it's changing nobody. I want it to be up here. I want there to be a ring on it. That's something different. It's otherworldly. It shows that I don't feel like I'm affected by these things on this earth. I don't care what other people are doing or saying. I know who my God is. I have been united with him. I am united. I am hidden in Christ. I am his. He is mine. He has complete control over me. And his resurrection power is living inside of me. And my life right now is just practice. It's just learning how to live the heavenly life that one day I I will live in complete perfection. I will know it completely. But right now I'm beginning to grab hold of it. I'm beginning to exercise it by faith. I'm beginning to shed off that old man and learn to walk in that new man that Jesus died to give me. Don't you want that today? Don't you want to live in that? Well, the Bible tells us how to do that. This is how we do it. This is how you transform the reality that you find yourself in today and walk in the real reality that one day this earth will pass away, but, but God's word and his kingdom will last forever. And that's where we're going to be. That's where we're going to be. And he wants us to walk in that now. Get out of the world. You're dead to it. Don't think about those things anymore. Don't let them rule your heart. Don't let them take the place of the heaven realities that God has called us to live in. And so the Bible says, Set your sights on the realities of heaven. You died to this life. You died to it. So think about, seek the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Well, guess what? Setting, setting your mind and thinking about things, that requires an effort. To set your mind. My verses are all, my, my notes are all over the place and I'm not even looking at them, but to set your mind requires a discipline. It's a striving after, not striving after something you can't attain, like, like what the world has a strive after. We're striving after something that's been won for us and it's just reaching out after it, setting our minds, choosing to say, I am not gonna think about the things of this world. I am not gonna give myself to the thinking of this world, the darkness of this world, the negativity, the hopelessness, the, the, the worldly wisdom that leads me nowhere. I'm giving myself to the realities of heaven. I'm setting my mind on those things. I am making a conscious decision and my actions are gonna back that up. 
I am going to begin to seek after those things. I'm making choices in my day. I'm seeking God for his help. I'm going to his word. I'm going to go to him in prayer. I'm going to ask him for a new infilling of his spirit to teach me how to set my mind on the realities of heaven that I might live by those realities and not the realities of this world. Ladies, the realities of heaven can be summed up in one thing. One thing, Jesus. Jesus, he's the reality of heaven. Everything that heaven is, it's what Jesus is. Everything that he is to us. And he is so many things. Just, just try, just try to discover. Just try to get to the depths of everything Jesus is to you today. Everything he is to you. Everything he's done to you. Everything you are in him. Every promise that he's made. Everything that he has in store for you in this life and in the life to come. Just try to discover. Try to plumb those depths. We will spend a lifetime doing it and then an eternity in heaven doing it. And God is calling us to rise above what we see here. And our, we would fix our eyes on the heavenly things, which is in Christ Jesus. Know him more. Understand him more. Draw closer to him. Know his word more. Know his promises no more. Know what he's done for you more. Know what he's made you to be more. Know what he has in store for you more. Go, reach out, set your mind on those things. Seek those things. Seek them, ladies. Seek them. Don't be passive. Don't be passive. Don't be content to just say, I'm saved. I'm forgiven of sin. And now I just wait here, twiddling my thumbs, just kind of getting by until hopefully he comes and takes me to heaven. No, what's happening in the middle here? Salvation and death. What's happening in the middle? Set your mind on the heavenlies. Begin that journey. Feel your spirit being drawn upward, upward. It's not to make a best life now, your best life now. That's garbage. It's garbage. Your best life now is nothing on earth. Your best life right now is what it is in Jesus Christ. And then whatever he makes it to be in this world, it will be. But it's whatever he is, whoever he is, whatever he is in you, whatever he wants to do in you, that's your best life. That's fixing your mind on the heavenlies. And it's promise after promise. It's better than you could ever hope it would be. Whatever this reality is, it seems so dismal. It seems so hopeless. Hopeless, and it is. So set your mind on the realities of heaven today. It's there for you. Nothing may have changed around you, but right now, God can transport you into that new reality. And it's not the power of positive thinking that is so uh, commonly taught today. It's not uh, think uh, think uh, these things into being. I, I, I forget there's some term that are, people are using now about how you can make things happen by thinking them into being. You don't have to exert any energy. It's already done. It's been won. It's been, the victory has, has been achieved. It's all there waiting for you. Jesus is seated saying, it's done. It's waiting for you. Now set your mind on those things and begin to walk in that spiritual life, not that worldly life that you died to. Walk in it and experience all I have for you in it. And I will keep drawing you up, up, onward, up, your soul, your spirit up to me until that day that I return. And the Bible says, and it win Christ. It's Christ in heaven. It's Christ who saved us. It's Christ who we died with. It's Christ who we rose with. It's Christ who gives us life. It's Christ who we're hidden in. And the Bible says, and when Christ who is your life is revealed on that day that he comes and God, let it be quickly. Let it be quickly, God. Haste in your coming, Jesus. We long to be with you, Lord, but it says when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the world, you will share in all his glory. Ladies, it just gets better and better. Whatever he's promised us in this life, the life he's given us, it's not just for heaven, it's for this earth. He wants to give us spiritual life. Don't look for worldly life, spiritual life. He wants us to discover it, the depths of who he is. But with glory to glory to glory, he takes us. Even in your apartment right now, he today, as you turn this off, enter in, set your mind on heavenly things and enter into the glory that he wants to take you into. It will still be just a whisper of the ultimate glory that awaits all of us, all of us, when there is no more pandemic, when there's no more uh, 
separation, isolation, no more social distancing, ladies. There is a time coming and this world is just a vapor, the Bible tells us. Don't give your heart and affections to this world. Don't let it rob you of the life that Jesus has given you. The world robs and steals life, but Jesus, he gives life and life more abundantly. And we will know that life together when we all experience the glory that he has waiting for us. And that's why we don't have to be depressed today. That's why we don't have to be hopeless today. That's why we can rise up wherever we are and where you feel like I have nothing to do, I have no one around me, you have everything to do. Come into the presence of the one who loves you, who died for you, who you are united with today, who you, you are hidden with in, in today, and let him minister to you. Set your mind on heavenly things today. Turn off the computer, turn off that social media, turn off anything that would rob you of those heavenly truths and that heavenly life that Jesus died to give you today and grab hold of it. Would you grab hold of it today? And let it not just be today, but the next day and the next day and the day after that and the day after that. And let that define what 2021 will be in your life, that you rise above, that you are not dictated by this world or whatever happens, whatever our future holds, it doesn't hold me. I know the one who holds me. I'm united with him and I live in his life and by his promises and his truths. And he is calling me upward. So God, take us, Lord, we pray today. God, help us to fix our minds on heavenly realities, Lord. Let them become more real to us than the realities, Lord, that we see around us today that the enemy would use to discourage us and say, this is all it is. This is all you are. This is all that you have. God, reveal to us the riches that are in Christ Jesus, the fellowship that we have with him, the peace, the comfort, the friend that we have in Jesus. Oh God, reveal that to us and teach us to walk in that God, that we would be taken to new spiritual heights in the year of 2021, Lord. Lord, touch my sisters today, God. Would you come and meet them, Lord, wherever they are right now, God. Fill the place that they're in, Lord God. They are your daughters, Lord God. And as they fix their minds, God, on you, Jesus, on heavenly realities, Lord, meet them, fill them, God, strengthen them, God, mature them in you, God. Teach them to walk in victory, God, in your love, in your peace, God, that we would bring heaven to earth, God that we would bring, Lord, the vantage point of heaven to this earth, Jesus, and that we would not be affected by earth, but that we would affect earth with heaven, Jesus, because we are found in you, and that's what you desire to do in this world, God. So do this in our lives, God. Encourage my sisters today with these real realities, God, the real reality of their life, Lord, and that they would be encouraged and that they would be spurred, God, to move onward now in you, Lord, and that they would take hold, God, of all that you've taken hold of them for, God, that they would reach new places of depth, God, and uh, maturity, God, in you, Lord, and that, Lord, we would affect the world around us because of that, that our hearts would be lifted, that we would walk in encouragement, and that we would touch those that are walking in darkness today so they, they might know the life that you've given us, Lord, that we live in, God, the abundant life, Jesus. We pray this, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you, God, for these truths. We thank you for your word, God. Thank you, Lord. Now help us to grab hold of it, Lord, and apply it to our lives, God, and by the power of your spirit to walk in it, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies. I'm commissioning you, I'm commissioning you. Set your mind and your thoughts on heavenly realities today and watch how it transforms your life even if nothing around us changes. And what are the practical ways of doing that? We talk about it all the time, prayer, reading our Bible. But ladies, those aren't just, that's our lifeline. That's our lifeline. That's how we enter into this new reality. So when you read your Bible, I read a blog of someone the other day who said, it's like you're looking into the eyes of Jesus, into the eyes of God. Look at it that way, that you're coming to the one that you've been united with and you're getting his heart. 
And it's a living word. It will not return void. It's a living word. Allow it to fill you with life. Come into the presence of God in prayer and watch you not leave the same. You won't always have a mountaintop experience, but you will not leave the same. Do this. Do this. Practice what you're thinking about. Remove those things that you know are robbing you of life. Remove them. Do practical things that we might live according to what Jesus has saved us to live for and do it by faith. We're exercising our faith to grab hold of what Jesus has secured for us. It's done. Grab hold of it, ladies. Unite yourself with the one who is united to you today. Open your heart and let him fill you today. And I believe that uh, Sarah has one more announcement to make. So I'm going to invite her to come back on. Also, thank you for that. Thank you for that reminder to set our minds and our lives on the realities, the reality of heaven. Yes. There's nothing that can shake that. No. Nothing that can shake God that. Us. Nothing in this world can shake the reality of heaven, of who Jesus is and what he's done for us and the abundance that he wants us to live in. Amen. Set our minds on that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Just some final reminders I wanted to give you all. Remember, our next meeting is Saturday, February 27th, 11 a.m. Make sure you are on the lookout for the signups for our small groups and make sure you email us. If you have something on your heart that you feel you, you see as a gap, email us, woman at brooklyntab.org. Make sure you are following us so you are staying up to date with what's happening. And then one last thing I wanna share with you all, um, for those of you who are mothers to um, teenage young women who are the ages 13 to 18, on February 20th, Saturday, February 20th at 12 p.m., they're gonna have Gracefully Becoming. And I know a lot of you are attached to some young women in your lives, if, whether they are your daughters, your niece, or whoever you know, let them know so that they can be connected with B2IM and be a part of uh, their kickoff, their welcome back meeting. So we thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Stay tuned for what we've got coming up. We love you. We miss you. We can't wait to see you. Remember, keep your mind, keep your lives on the reality of heaven. Amen. Let that keep you in this time. We'll see you soon. God bless you. God bless you. Love you.